coming to deglutition it refers to the passage of food from oral cavity into stomach again it is a reflex response that is triggered by afferent impulses in the 5th 9th and 10th cranial nerve these impulses are integrated in the nucleus of tact solitarius and nucleus ambiguus the efferent fibers pass to pharyngeal musculature and the tongue via 5th 7th and 12th cranial nerve the deglutition has three important stages that is oral phase or buccal phase pharyngeal phase and third one is esophageal stage oral phase oral phase is a voluntary stage the food passes from mouth to the pharynx ear this in, this includes i mean this phase includes voluntary placing of food and rolling of tongue this backward and upward movement of the tongue presses the food against palate and bolus moves from mouth to the pharynx pharyngeal phase it constitutes passage of food through the pharynx into the esophagus it is an involuntary phase as the bolus of food enters uh, the posterior part of the mouth and pharynx it stimulates sensory receptors located in these areas this will initiate reflex contraction of pharyngeal muscles once the food is in oropharynx there are four possible outlets for food first it can go back into the mouth second one to the nasal cavity it may enter into the respiratory tract or it, it should go to the esophagus the entry of food into the mouth prevented by approximation of the tongue against the floor of the mouth soft palate is pulled upwards to close the posterior nares which prevents the reflex of food into the nasal cavities paratopharyngeal folds are pulled medially to make a slit like opening through which the food must pass into the posterior pharynx the slits perform selective action allowing only the properly masticated food to pass through vocal cords are strongly approximated that is stopping the breathing temporarily which is called as uh, deglutition apnea and the larynx is pulled upwards and anteriorly by the neck muscles epiglottis swings backward to close the pharyn- laryngeal opening all these guides the foot towards the esophagus and prevent its entry into the trachea the upward movement of the larynx also pulls up enlarges the opening of esophagus and upper esophageal sphincter relaxes thus allowing the foot to move easily from posterior pharynx into upper esophagus this sphincter remains strongly contracted in between uh, swallows to prevent entry of air into esophagus during respiration so these are the different s- stages the oral stage the pharyngeal stage and the esophageal stage where in oral stage from the mouth it it is going to enter into the oropharynx and in the pharynx the foot is uh, going to and from the oropharynx into the esophagus by Uh, reflex activation where the food cannot enter into the nasopharynx back it cannot enter into the trachea because of the closure of uh, laryngeal inlet and also the epiglottis makes a way for the food from uh, from the oropharynx into the esophagus and in between there will be a deglutition apnea as well which is going to stop the respiration for a while entire muscular wall of pharynx contracts that is uh, beginning in the superior part then spreading downward over the middle or inferior pharyngeal areas which propels the foot by peristalsis that is it is a reflex response that is initiated when gut wall is stretched by the contents of the lumen and it occurs in all parts of the git from esophagus to the rectum and ultimately food is uh, brought to the esophagus the entire process of this stage occurs in less than 2 seconds coming to esophageal phase during this phase food bolus is propelled from upper part of esophagus to stomach it is involuntary stage again and uh, exhibits two types of peristalsis that is primary and secondary peristalsis primary peristalsis it is the continuation of the peristaltic wave that begins in the pharynx and spreads to esophagus during pharyngeal stage 
this wave passes from pharynx to stomach in 8 to 10 seconds secondary peristalsis when primary peristalsis fails to empty the bolus into stomach the retained food initiates secondary peristaltic waves due to the distension of esophagus the second waves are initiated partly by intrinsic neural circuits in the myentric plexus and partly by reflexes that begin in the pharynx they are transmitted upward and uh, through afferent fibers to the vagus uh, afferent fibers of vagus to medulla and back again to esophagus through 9th and 10th cranial nerves when peristaltic wave reaches the lower esophageal sphincter it relaxes and allows the foot to enter the stomach and this relaxation is mediated via neurons that release nitric oxide and bip so the disorders of swallowing dysphagia nothing but difficulty in swallowing achalasia is a condition in which food accumulates in the esophagus esophagus is massively dilated it is due to the increased uh, resting lower esophageal sphincter tone and incomplete relaxation upon swallowing the myentric plexus of the esophagus is deficient at the lower esophageal uh, sphincter in this condition and the release of nitric oxide and vip is de defective it can be treated by pneumatic dilatation of the sphincter or incision of the esophageal muscle that is also called as myotomy inhibition of acetylcholine release by injection of botulinum toxin into the lower esophageal sphincter is also an effective and produces relief that lasts for several months gastroesophageal reflux disease it refers to a condition in which there is a reflux gastric contents into the esophagus there is a there is a reflux of gastric contents into the esophagus it is due to the incompetence of lower esophageal sphincter this reflux causes heartburn and esophagitis and can lead to ulceration of esophagus aerophagia and some people especially nervous people swallow large amount of air some air is regurgitated by belching and some of it is absorbed and rest reaches the colon and it is expelled as a flatus in some individuals gas in the intestine causes cramps and borgo rigmi that is rumbling noises and abdominal discomfort